up everybody ghost girl 007 here and today we're going to be reading another thing out of this magazine today is another episode episode 8 of haunted reads where we read out of paranormal stuff like magazines and books so we're going to read some of this today if you're new to my channel just go down in the description below and subscribe so without further ado, let's get into the video. The Winchester House. A different kind of haunted house. Lalanda Villa, or the Winchester Mystery House, as it comes to be known, was built by Sarah Winchester. The heir to the, heir to the Winchester rifle fortune. After her husband died, she bought a property with a small farmhouse on it in San Nefe, California. She supposedly was under the direction of a psychic who told her that if she wanted to evade the ghosts of the people murdered by the guns that had made her so wealthy, that is what she's had to do. Move west and build. And build she did. She would hold seances each night to find out what the spirits wanted her to build. Then she would sketch the plans, have the room built, and then tear it down once the spirit was satisfied. At one point, the house had 500 rooms. Currently, it is a 160 room labyrinth with 10,000 window panes, some which are made of Tiffany stained glass in spaces with no light and 2,000 doors, not all of which lead to rooms. Only 17 of the 47 fireplaces have chimneys. Over the 36 years that Sarah owned the house, 1886 through 1922, she renovated it continuously, spending over five million dollars, which is the equivalent to about 70 million today. The only thing that stopped her consistent building was her death. While the house did have all of the luxuries of the time, including indoor plumbing with hot water, central heating, elevators and more not all of sarah's designs decisions were made for comfort she built staircases that went right into the ceiling some of the doors led to straight drops into the kitchen or garden secret passageways abound and there is one cabinet that runs straight through 30 rooms Today, the house is still considered one of the most haunted locations in the country. Cold spots and disembodied voices are incredibly common. Often, people who work there hear their names called out when no one is around. Once a tour guide tripped and then heard, Are you okay? Even though she was utterly alone, Sarah herself is said to linger in her old bedroom and seance room, and a kindly spirit named Clyde endlessly carts wheeled barrows full of coal around the basement, hot flashes, dizziness, taps on the shoulder, and spectral hands have all been reported in the house, though the management and guests alike feel fairly sure that the spirits that linger there are friendly. So this is the house right here. The Winchester Mansion. This next one. You can't escape asylums in prisons. Perhaps the scariest places of all 
are the ones you aren't allowed to leave. Asylums and prison, prisons are historically cruel and tragic places that confine the abnormal, the abused, the mentally ill, the violent, and so many other whom society deems too difficult and dangerous or deranged to be allowed to walk the streets. Then there are people who decide to work in such places. Is there any place more likely for a spirit to become trapped than in a prison? Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum Opened in 1864, this West Virginia asylum operated for over a century. It is a massive rambling stone structure that was under construction until 1881. It is many, its many buildings contain 2.5 miles worth of corridors on an opinion of 666 acres it was designed to hold 250 patients during a time when mentally ill people were just beginning to get any treatment at all prior to that those considered insane were locked up in ordinary prisons often chained in place trapped in their own filth and forced to endure torturously neglectful conditions. The trans allegheny Lunatic Asylum, by terms also known as the West Virginia Hospital for the Insane and the Western State Hospital, was designed using a new moral treatment, ideas that separate the insane from the criminal and aim to help them. The asylum itself was built using the Kirkbride plan, which maintained that a hospital's, a hospital's design could aid in a patient's recovery. The idea was that if a person were given lots of sunlight, quiet pastoral landscapes, and plenty of mental and physical activities, their health could be stimulated. At least that was the idea. From the jump, people, including children, were institutionalized for vague reasons, including novel reading, laziness, and religious excitement, which were rarely just excuses to get rid of unwanted family members or troublemakers. Though the ensuing decades, the treatment of mentally ill patients, both the gener generally so and the wrongly accused, went through many dark twists and turns. Electric shock therapy and submerging into freezing cold water baths, caging uncomfortable patients, low lobotomies they all became common practices here and thought throughout the country by the 1950s this hospital was overcrowded nightmare with more than 2,400 people cramped into its dark confines in 1994 the faculty was the facility was closed and abandoned. At least by the living, today this monument in the mistreatment of mental ill people has been partially restored as a museum and offers tours of parts of the campus. Much of it, however, remains closed to the public as it is too dangerous. But it's not just the delinquishing of the buildings that scares most people. Stories of the grounds being haunted are internationally known. The f facility was 
chronically underfunded and understaffed and many patients died there. Suicides and patient on patient violence were sadly common. Once it took eight days for anyone to notice that a man had taken his own life in his cell. It's widely believed a woman killed by other patients was dumped in a stairwell where she remained undiscovered for two months. After all this trauma and horror, spirits are said to make themselves known and equitably voices, screams, crashes, footsteps, and slamming doors are all commonly reported. Historically laughing and the sound of gurneys willing down the corridors have been some of workers some of the reason for workers to quit the asylum after words. And there's the Transylvania, there's one of the hospitals. And this says up here, when I read this little corner right here, it says a little girl named Lily wants you to come play with her on the fourth floor of the Trans Allegheny Lunar lunatic asylum that's kind of creepy but okay working there for only a few days balls of light float through halls and full body apparitions have been sighted by numerous visitors the spirit of a patient named ruth is said to wander around whistling, sometimes pushing visitors up against the walls. A little girl named Lily waits for someone to come and play with her on the fourth floor, and while Lily is not thought to be terribly threatening, the creeper, who also haunts that floor, is a menacing presence that can test the bravery of even the most seasoned paranormal investigator. Now we're going to do the Moundsville Penitentiary. Sixteen miles northwest of the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, the Moundsville Penitentiary, also known as the West Virginia State Penitentiary, opened just a over a decade later. It operated for much of the same time, but its treatment of those confined within its walls was even more brutal than its asylum cousin. This gothic style compound with its castle-like torus and battlements was an imposing forebuilding place even when new. The walls of the yard were five feet thick at ground level and extended five feet below the earth. The cells were five by seven feet and it didn't take long for the prison to become overcrowded, forcing two or three men to share each of those mid school quarters. In 1937, it was called a sham and disgrace by a local judge because 2,500 prisoners were crowded into a place billed for 800 people. And an estimate of 998 men died there, including 36 homicides, 85 by state man mandated executions at the prison's gallows which were public until a man was decapitated during his hanging in decapitated by during his hanging in 1931 and nine of them in the prison electric chair known as old sparky 
Riots broke out. Some prisoners escaped. Others were beaten. Solitary confinement was liberally administrated and epidemics ravaged the population as overcrowding continued to plague this, the prison. Stories of ghosts at prisons go all the way back to the 1930s and guards thought they saw an inmate walking the grounds. Though no prisoner was missing, rumors began immediately that it was an apparition and that rip reputation has stuck banging footsteps voices and yelling can all be heard coming from no identifiable source the basement room known as the sugar shack is among the most haunted areas in the penitentiary this was where prisoners would go for recreation and where they would gamble and fight Today, cold spots have been reported in the room, and voices have been heard whispering and even arguing. One tour guide reports having been grabbed by the arm while down there. A new inmate once saw the specter of a man hanging in his cell on his first night there. He had no way of knowing it. But a former resident of that cell had indeed hung, hung himself there. Another spirit making noise and stalking around in the basement was said to be a maintenance man who was allegedly a snitch and was shived to death to, in a bathroom during a riot. An inmate named Red Snyder brutally murdered another prisoner and was then stabbed to death himself for a few a few years later. His angry spirit is said to be one of the ghosts that can't or won't leave. Another malevolent spirit often felt is his is the name the Shadow Man. He only lurks in the dark and has no discernment features some believe he was a practitionally sad guard who lay in wait for his victims. Other stories allege there are many shadow men who haunt different areas of the prison where murders and violence had taken place. The shower cages, the chapel, the north wagon gate, site of former gallows, and, of course, the sugar shack. In addition to the prison's history as a place of so much violence and trauma, it also was built next to and perhaps on the site of a bur burial mound of Native American people. Many have speculated that the energy coming from the disturbed sacred site has fueled the intense paranormal activity that's been reported. So here we have some pictures of the inside of the prison. Okay. Yeah, this is... Mainsville Penitentiary was in use until 1995. So this is Mainsville Prison, the outside of it, right here. This is what it looks like. Eastern State Penitentiary. In 1787, the Philadelphia Society for Elevating for the Miseries of Public Prisons met a Benjamin Franklin's house to discuss how to build a true penitentiary, meaning a place intentionally designed to elicit regret and penance in its prisoners. They also hoped to cure the allies and abuses of traditional prisons and jails. In 1829, Eastern State Penitentiary opened as the f of the first of its kind 
in the world. Instead of focusing on physical punishment and torture, this person wanted to wanted prisoners to reflect on what they'd done. It was believed that this remorse would aid in rehabilitation. The cells themselves had toilets, running water, and heat at a time when even the White House didn't have much. The cells also had private outdoor exercise runs and skylights to let in the sunshine from heaven. But prisoners were also strictly isolated to the point of wearing hoods when they were outside of the cells. This solitary confinement was meant to leave wrongdoers alone with their thoughts so they could repent and heal. While this many sound merciful, merciful and humane, today it's widely acknowledged that such extreme isolation often serves only to drive people temperamentally or permanently insane. Even at the time, people had their objections. Among them was Charles Dickens, who wrote, I hold this slow and daily tempering with the mysteries of the brain to be immersibly worse than any torture of the body. Eastern State Penitentiary eventually evolved into a common prison where prisoners worked, interacted, and were disciplined. More and more cell blocks were added, and solitary confinement was moved to a windowless basement with no light and no plumbing, known as the hole. Solitary was meant to punish instead of redeem, signaling a full reversal of the eastern state's original intentions. Guards submerged prisoners in water and then literally hung them out to dry on an outside wall. This even was done in frigid winter months, and ice would cover the prisoners' skin. Iron bands bound an inmate's hands behind their back connected to a collar that went around the yep so that when the prison the person moved their I'm not gonna read that convicts were also bound to the mad chair which was meant to cut off circulation to extreme. It did this so well that the body had to be uh, amputated after extended use. By the time of Eastern States closed in 1971, over 70,000 people had done time there. In the years since, it has become known as one of the most haunted places in America. Stories about strange experiences Involving both inmates and guards go back as far as 19, well, the 1940s. There are countless reports of voices shouting, whispering, and laughing. Laughing, Shadows cast from nowhere race along the walls. A ghostly guard has been seen keeping watch in one of the towers. Gary Johnson, a locksmith who was long worked at restoring the prison, has seen contorted faces, contorted faces and been beckoned by an apparition. Once when he was working to open a cell in Block 4, he was overcome by a force so fear, fierce that he couldn't move. He felt a wave of negative energy crash out of the cell and then try to lure him inside.
so that's what some of it looks like there inside of the prison. I'm gonna read I'm gonna read this part right up here. You have a visitor. Today's Eastern State Penitentiary has been restored and operates as a museum, offering tours during the day and night. Visitors can explore the hospital wing, underground torture cells, and the cell where Al Capone stayed. You play with the fine wood furniture and oriental rugs. He enjoyed during his eight months sentence at the prison. As it, it as if its haunted prison weren't scary enough on its own, each Halloween the cell blocks are transformed into a massive haunted house attraction that sells out months in advance. Al Capone's rather lavish cell. So right here is Al was Al Capone's cell. And that's still I'm pretty sure how it looks like to this day. They still got it set up. I think this is what it looked like way back when, like a long time ago. We're pretty much nearing the end of the magazine. So, the very last page is a ghost town. Body, California isn't known as a ghost town. Just because it was abandoned, it is also reported to be a town of restless spirits. Once a thriving gold mining community in the mid 19th century, Body was home to 1665 saloons, a red light district, and more violent crime than can be counted. In 1881, Reven F. M. Warrington wrote that Body is a sea of sin lashed by temperates of lust and passion. After the mine went dry and the town abandoned, Body became a national park that stands in a state of arrest decay, and many of its houses have reported hauntings. The Mensaquini house is known for phantom children playing in its yard, and the spirit of a wronged maid who took her own life has appeared to many people at the Kane house. But perhaps the most famous supernatural story about body is its curse. Anyone who takes an item out of the town is supposedly marked for misfortune, and indeed park rangers are said to routinely have stolen items mailed back to them after bad luck befalls the thieves. And this is what the town looked like. If you want to see more about this town, you can watch um, Real Scary Stories. I think that you can watch them on YouTube. They have a lot about this town, actually, or a little bit, a little segment episode about this town. And I think it was even on All Saw Mysteries. But that's also the end of the magazine. So if you want to see more videos like this, similar with us reading paranormal stories or books, then just keep watching my channel and like and subscribe and comment down in the comments below. And until next time, keep up with the spooks, guys.